Hello, hey, welcome. We have a, another very interesting case today on digital slide review and sign out. Uh, it came to us in um, consultation uh, from an outside institution, so it's kind of a hybrid workup. Uh, the patient uh, was a uh, adult man, 65 years old, who had presented with a groin mass and no other known history of neoplasia. He had no uh, systemic symptoms of fever or infection or anything like that. Um, and so uh, it seemed the best way to approach him uh, was to perform a needle core biopsy of this lymph node. Uh, this was done and uh, several core samples, as you can see here, uh, with intervening pink areas, partially necrotic areas, and uh, dense areas of uh, blue cellular tissue. Zooming in a little bit more closely, on these uh, high uh, cellularity areas, uh, we can see uh, there's not a lot of architecture to them. Uh, they're fairly diffuse uh, pattern of uh, small blue cells, a lot of uh, nuclear material here. Uh, and as you can see, there's not uh, gland formation or other uh, features, maybe a little bit of uh, cell balling here in a few areas. So it's a very undifferentiated uh, small blue cell tumor. Going at a little higher magnification, we can see there's quite a lot of uh, mitotic activity here. Um, and the chromatin is fairly diffuse. I uh, took some even higher magnification photomicrographs uh, to sort of illustrate these features, uh, which we can see here. Very little bit of nuclear molding and we can see the atypical mitoses, the karyorexis. So it looks very much like a small cell carcinoma. Um, and uh, that is kind of the uh, point at which uh, the uh, uh, workup began. Um, looking at the chromatin, you see a very diffuse pattern. So uh, let's think for a second kind of what our differential ought to be in a situation like this in an adult, older adult. Um, lymphoma certainly in the differential, although these nuclei do not look terribly uh, like uh, the nuclei of uh, lymphoma. Small cell carcinoma certainly would be a consideration. Melanoma, neuroblastoma in a different age group, and similarly for rhabdomyosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma, these would primarily be in a pediatric age group. But Merkel cell carcinoma certainly could be uh, in this patient age group as well. Uh, so uh, with that, thinking about the uh, kind of immunohistochemical panel that might be useful, uh, basic lymphoma panel, uh, neuroendocrine panel, uh, S100, SOX10, uh, and then uh, differential cytokeratins, if we were seriously considering Ewing's or rhabdomyosarcoma, we might add some of these other stains as well. So the uh, referring institution had done some of these and had uh, uh, gotten some synaptophysin positivity, um, negative for CD20, CD3, um, and uh, positive with CK20. Um, this is, uh, here you see the synaptophysin, uh, neuroendocrine control here, nicely uh, positive in our islands of tumor cells. You can see the pale brown staining here. I won't go to higher magnification, it's pretty evident. Um, another immunohistochemical stain uh, here looking at CK20. Um, and, uh, this was, I think, where uh, the referring institution sort of missed the clues uh, that are here, because this is a pretty strong diffuse positive here. And I think if you looked at this just at low magnification, you might uh, have missed the opportunity to make the diagnosis. Uh, however, and we'll give it some time to come in here to higher magnification, uh, as we focus down in some of these areas, uh, I believe you'll begin to appreciate that there is a, a degree of punctation to this uh, staining pattern. Um, 
And in fact, if we look at cells like this here or this here, we see a very pronounced um, dot-like pattern uh, along with some of this more generalized uh, positivity. And I'd encourage you to come back and look at this stain on the digital slides so that you can study it uh, a little bit better because uh, this was not appreciated by the referring laboratory who uh, rendered a diagnosis of uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma, which is technically true, uh, but uh, they missed the possible suggestion of Merkel cell carcinoma because this pattern of a dot-like CK20 uh, pattern of staining is a highly suggestive, uh, if not almost diagnostic, of uh, Merkel cell carcinoma. Well, because it was a referral case and uh, they had uh, not uh, made that diagnosis, we did some additional immunohistochemical stains that would be cons consonant with that. Here, a uh, uh, PAX5 stain, you see the cells are nicely positive with PAX5. Um, again, this is uh, uh, not clear why this is happening, but it's, it's certainly a very clear positive stain. Similarly with uh, BCL2, uh, the um, here staining the normal germinal centers and staining uh, these uh, tumor cells as well in our patient. And then finally, to sort of uh, nail it down a little bit more completely, we did the uh, uh, Merkel cell polyomavirus stain, uh, which we can see here, uh, even at low magnification is uh, just as bright as bright can be. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, this is uh, both a nuclear, primarily it's the nuclear positivity that we're interested in. Um, and so we'll uh, allow it to come into focus here so that you can be persuaded that uh, indeed, the nuclei are staining positively. Uh, many of these cells very strongly positive in the nucleus, all somewhat positive, more positive than the surrounding cells. Um, and so uh, this is a positive uh, polyomavirus stain. Well, Merkel cell carcinoma, as you know, is an aggressive uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma that's primarily cutaneous. However, uh, in several cases that we've seen, uh, it can present as a primary metastatic disease without any identified or identifiable primary site. That can be true whether it presents in a uh, neck node or near a parotid, or in this case, uh, in the groin. Um, it's usually seen in uh, older Caucasian males. Um, and when in the skin, it's more frequent in sun exposed site. So therefore the head and neck and the extremities are more frequently encountered than say the trunk. Um, and as I've indicated, most of these cases are associated with a Merkel cell polyomavirus as the uh, underlying etiologic agent. However, some are also due to ultraviolet exposure. And as we've illustrated, it's positive in a dot-like pattern with CK20. It can be positive with neuroendocrine markers as well as PAX5, BCL2 and FLY1 which we did not do in our particular case. So uh, with that uh, understanding, uh, I've uh, brought in a couple of other uh, examples. Uh, here's one from uh, a lymph node uh, that is completely excised. And I put these in here for reference and comparison so that as you come back and look at uh, this, you'll have a little bit of the perspective of uh, what other cases may look like. Here you can see how this might easily be mistaken for lymphoma. It's a very diffuse pattern, um, but very, very uh, small uh, uniform cells, scant cytoplasm, slightly granular chromatin in this case uh, compared to our case, uh, uh, and uh, again, active mitotically. Uh, in the uh, skin, um, uh, this is a nice example here. You see an ulcerated, very blue lesion. Uh, and uh, so you can understand how the differential might include uh, basal cell carcinoma or uh, even small cell melanoma and so forth. Uh, the distinguishing feature, of course, would be the distinctive immunohistochemistry um, that would allow you to uh, refine it uh, into the very aggressive uh, small cell malignancy category uh, and then pursue the uh, more definitive markers uh, that we have discussed. And I think we also have here one additional case, again, from the skin with a very deep 
uh, extension. Uh, so you can see how this can be uh, mistaken for adnexal tumors or for melanoma. Um, and uh, yet this is a very significant uh, lesion to uh, make that diagnosis. So our final sign-out diagnosis is Merkel cell carcinoma, metastatic to an inguinal node, and this is uh, secondary to polyoma virus um, uh, as the etiologic or underlying driver uh, lesion. We hope you enjoyed that case, and thanks so much for spending a few moments with us. If you like this case, please uh, hit the like button. And uh, of course, we always uh, appreciate if you'll uh, take the time to subscribe so that uh, future video releases uh, every few days we release a new one, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, you'll be alerted for those. We always welcome your feedback and appreciate comments, suggestions, or uh, questions about the cases. And uh, uh, we try to take those into account and respond to them in a timely uh, manner. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>